Kurt Slogan, I'm Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, just heard from Leon a, uh, a quick anecdote about you. You grew up in Washington. Uh, I think you said you played for your grandfather at Mercer Island. Yes. And then you drove across the country through Bozeman to get to Lehigh? Multiple times. <laughs> um, what was that experience like? Can, I, can you take us through how you end up on the East Coast, you know, on the opposite side of where you grew up? Yeah, you know, um, for me it was an interesting recruiting process. I was I was blessed to be a part of a basketball program that was highly successful, and so there were college players coming through every year and college coaches checking on us as young kids, you know, each and every year. And so um, Lehigh University had been recruiting a, a teammate of mine who was a year older. Um, ultimately, that kind of led them to come back the following year and, and check in with me. And, um, you know, I was able to, to receive an offer to, to play Division One basketball. Um, the reality is, uh, you know, I had one offer and uh, it was a great school, um, an opportunity to compete at uh, the highest level. And um, so I, I took it. Um, I just had to figure out how to get my car across when we were allowed to have cars on campus. So uh, that's kind of how we ended up driving cross country. And, um, you know, for me, it was a, an interesting experience because Lehigh didn't have a lot of uh, tradition at the time. And, uh, you know, it was very different in, in that sense than, um, the high school environment I had grown up in. So it was more about changing the culture um, instead of building on top of one. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of, of uh, ups and downs with that and, and uh, great lessons in that for me that I think have, have really shaped my coaching philosophy and, and how I deal with our players and um, so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, over the course of 11 years there as a player and assistant coach, um, to be able to leave that program at a place where um, they were prepared to reach the NCAA tournament again the year after I left and beat Duke and, and send somebody to the NBA lottery pick was um, honestly not something I would have imagined, you know, as an 18 year old when I went away to college. It just wasn't even um, something that seemed realistic. So uh, very proud of my time there, very grateful for the opportunity that they gave me um, in short. <laughs> and you were a journalism major? I was, yeah. Do you have any regrets about getting into basketball coaching? <laughs> No, no, I don't. Um, you know, I went into journalism, uh, quite honestly, because uh, I like to write. Um, and I thought that, uh, you know, the ability to, to, to communicate uh, would serve me well um, in what I knew my passion was, which was coaching. It pays better, too. Sometimes. <laughs> better, better, than our, better than our job. <laughs> Uh, Victor Flores with 406 Sports. Um, nice, mm -hmm. nice to meet you as well. Nice to meet you. Um, I guess, uh, you know, you, I know you have some ties with Travis DeCure and um, what other kind of Big Sky ties, if any, do you have? And just um, how do you feel like, um, you know, living in Montana and, and what, you know, the ties you have here? Yeah, well, first off, um, you know, we, my family and I, we've always loved Montana. You know, when I was coaching at Whitworth in Spokane, we, we would come over here um, for vacation and, and camping and things like that. Um, it's a beautiful country, beautiful area, and uh, it was always a place, you know, even based on those drives through that just felt like uh, a family environment, felt like home, felt like a place that you could uh, really raise a family. And so we've always had great appreciation for that. Um, in, in terms of the first part with, you know, the Big Sky Connections and, and the basketball community, uh, in the Pacific Northwest, um, the community is small. And if you're there long enough, you, you get to know everybody over time. Um, obviously, Travis and I, you know, have very deep roots through the Mercer Island basketball uh, family. And uh, he was somebody that when I was Luke's age, I had a chance to watch play in high school. And, uh, and then as I rose up and got older, um, he came back and started his coaching journey under my grandfather um, and, and, you know, played a, played a role in, in my development as a player. And, and we've stayed in touch for a long time after that. So um, very, you know, grateful for that experience. I've, Fortunately, also had the, the opportunity to compete against him already a few times when I was at Whitworth through playing exhibition games and, and whatnot. Um, so that won't be too awkward. Uh, we've done that before. Um, and obviously we're both highly competitive. So uh, there's gonna be no, uh, no issue with that. Um, but you know, the rest of the conference, is, it's, it's interesting. Uh, David Riley, the head coach at Eastern Washington was a, a player at, at Whitworth the year before uh, I took over there. Um, so I've known him for years, um, kind of helped him just navigate that transition from college into coaching. And uh, obviously he's, uh, he's been at Eastern for a long time since then. Coach Looney at Idaho State, um, obviously was at Seattle Pacific. Um, so we were always crossing paths on the recruiting trail. Um, and then I, I replaced him at Point Loma. So 
it's a really small world. There's a lot of familiarity in that. And, um, you know, that, that's one of the things that makes this conference and this opportunity really, really fun and unique. What do you think were the biggest keys to having so much success uh, at Woolworth and then at Point Loma? Well, number one, you know, uh, when I looked at this opportunity, um, the two things that stood out about it were the things that made those opportunities special, and that's culture and community. People that care, uh, people that wanna win, and people that are not afraid to put the resources and, and the um, things in place to make that happen. Um, and then the second thing is, is the players. Um, you know, ultimately, you, you've gotta have talented players, you gotta have high character people in your locker room to, to, to win championships. And uh, we've been able to find those people, those young men, um, because of uh, the alignment and the, the support uh, of the programs that we've, we've been involved with. Hey coach, Robbie Whittle, NBC Montana. Um, have any of your former players expressed any interest in joining you at Montana State? Uh, you know, obviously this has happened so fast. Um, you know, those conversations are, are, are really hard to, to walk into a room of, of young men that you love dearly, um, that you, you know, sat in their living rooms and, and talked to their families about um, your role in their life uh, way beyond basketball and when their career's done. Um, that certainly doesn't change with this move. Um, for me, coaching is about relationships. I, I got into this to, to be a part of young people's lives and, and pay forward what, what I was given. Um, so I, I think they all know that about me. Um, but everyone's situation is different. Uh, what they're looking for, um, you know, what, what, uh, what their opportunities, um, you know, look like after college and things like that. So. You know, I'm sure you know there's a lot of wrestling with that um, in this day and age, as we've seen here in the last uh, in the last few days. So it's just a very fluid time, um, but ultimately, you know, the most important thing to me is that those guys know that we care about them um, and that we love them, and that's you know from from player one through thirteen. What do you think the most challenging adjustment will be going from D two to D one ball now? You know, to me, uh, and, and I said this to, to, to Leon in the process. Um, you know, I, I felt like. Uh, basketball is basketball you know at, at each level that you compete at there's a relativity to it because everybody has the same resources relative to level um, I've had the opportunity to coach uh, against many division one teams while coaching division two and division three teams so uh, during my time at Point Loma we were four and two against division one opponents uh, with you know around eight scholarships so uh, the opportunity to have 13 and be on a level footing uh, ground is exciting um, obviously there's uh, a calibration to your evaluation process and the recruiting that goes on. Um, I made that calibration once from Lehigh to Whitworth, going from the Division I to the Division III level, um, and then again to Point Loma from the Division III to the Vi Division II level. Um, so it's really about you know, knowing what it takes uh, at each level to accomplish the goals that, that your program has. And uh, you know, I think there's a lot of parallels between um, championship success and so we're looking for those characteristics that go along with the level we compete at whether that's athleticism size the ability to shoot the basketball um, you know we know what that looks like it's just a matter of going out and putting that puzzle together now welcome to Bozeman coach Ashley Walker from MTN Sports uh, you kind of talked about how quick of a process this was was that kind of the first time that you've been able to talk to some of the players and what's kind of the next steps with them I know there's quite a few of them that are in the portal maybe having some conversations with them what's kind of yeah, uh, well, first and foremost, it was very refreshing for me um, that in this process, uh, Leon and the administration here wanted to bring us to campus, um, not just to see the place in the community, but also to be able to uh, have the, the input of the players after meeting with me. Um, so on Sunday morning, I had a chance to, to meet with them as a team during the process. And as I described to them at that time, um, you know, my viewpoint of that meeting was, was not that it was part of the interview process, but it was part of our first team meeting. And so, you know, they know what I'm about already, um, I think because of that meeting. Um, since that time during these last, you know, 24 hours, I've had a chance to sit down with almost all of them already on a one-to-one -one basis and um, kind of help support, you know, each of their needs and what they're going through. You know, ultimately, um, as a coach, it's gotta be about the players first and each of them have different um, needs and different desires and different perspectives that they're uh, evaluating right now, whether they're in the portal or not. Or not. Um, and so it's really about listening. Uh, it's about building that trust with them and, and, um, and then finding uh, the, 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 the match um, on both sides that are gonna help us go forward and continue to win championships. Coach, in your prepared statement earlier, you mentioned uh, a lot of assistant coaches who have helped you along the way. Um, just as I imagine, 
you know, recruiting to here is very much in the early stages. Imagine assembling the staff is also in that uh, you know, very beginning process. What do you look for in assistance and, and how far along is that process? What do you value of the people that will occupy those positions? Yeah, um, well, I've, I've been blessed to have tremendous assistant coaches in our basketball family during the years that I've been a head coach. Um, you know, what we look for are the same things characteristically that we look for in our players. We look for uh, people that have talent, you know, people that understand what it takes to recruit high level players, develop high level players, interact with the community um, and, and help build a program. Uh, my, my assistant coaches at, at Point Loma, uh, Justin Downer and, and Julia Smith uh, have been have been terrific uh, resources for me. Um, and obviously, you know, Everything is fluid right now because of how quickly things have moved and, and conversations are uh, still being finalized. But you know, I, I think we're on a really, really good track um, to, to hit the ground running. And uh, obviously, as soon as we can announce those things, we will. But uh, we're, we're thrilled um, to, to be able to you know, come together within our basketball family and, and build a staff that's going to represent the Bobcat family the right way. Hey, Coach, uh, DJ Bauer here from SWX. Uh, you mentioned in your intro press conference how uh, you know what Sprinkle has established here kind of transformed the, the concept of and the expectations of what Bobcat basketball has. As you get into year one here, um, you know what is your kind of team building approach in order to try to maintain that success? Is it to keep these guys in the portal? Is it to look into the portal for other options? Uh, what, what's kind of your approach there as you get to year one? Well, you know, like I said, in our in those initial individual meetings. Um, I'm listening. I'm trying to figure out where people are, what their perspectives are, and what their goals are. Uh, ultimately, we want people that want to be here. Um, and, and so as soon as we have clarity on, on, on what holes we need to fill and, and where to go with the roster, um, we'll attack that and obviously have a list um, to do that right now. Um, you know, it's, it's a very fluid time, you know, and so we're kind of taking it one day at a time um, and assessing our needs and, and also uh, being able to to put a roster together um, that's, that's going to be uh, representative of the foundation of culture that Danny and his staff had um, that to me is paramount um, one of the main reasons that Montana State has won two championships in a row is because of that culture the connection between the players and so the recruiting process will start here internally um, with the guys that are here and, um, and and then branch out from there you mentioned uh, in your intro press conference the uh, four, four values that you bring with uh, you know, trust, love, commitment, and servanthood. Um, how do you kind of settle on that being your, your values, and uh, how do you plan to instill that into this podcast? Yeah, um, we, we, I settled on those things because to me those are the fa that's the fabric and the glue of any relationship, whether that's player-coach or it's husband-wife. Um, those four things have, have guided relationship building for me as a head coach for 12 years and the results have come behind that. Um, you know, how that happened was, was pretty organic during uh, my time as an assistant at Lehigh. Um, the, the, the 2010 NCAA tournament team that played Kansas, um, you know, kind of embarked on a, on a team building uh, process that fall. And, and we landed on trust, love, and commitment as, as the foundation for, for that team. It's embedded on the NCAA tournament ring that, that uh, represents that season. Um, and then over the years, I was able to add servanthood to it um, just to, to make sure um, we really emphasize that, uh, you know, we're taking care of one another and, and helping build each other up. So it's been a great um, formula for building relationships. Um, there's a lot of parallels between those core values in the game of basketball as well. You know, whether that's a defensive rotation, sharing the basketball, being committed to doing the right things, um, and again, you know, serving one another. So. We just use those things as guidelines, and um, if, you're, if our actions fall in line with that, um, you know, good, great things have happened. Coach, part of a two-part question. I know you talked about your relationship with Zakir. I was wondering if you guys have exchanged any texts since you've uh, gotten the job, and then also maybe you've talked to Sprinkle since he's departed. Yeah, yeah, I have. Uh, I have spoken with 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 Danny. Um, obviously, you know, he's a Bobcat, and uh, his blood, sweat, and tears are are, are on the hardwood. Um, his tears are in the office and he cares about this place. I know that and I appreciate that because I've coached at my alma mater as well. And so, um, you know, we, we want to continue to represent him, um, his teammates, all of our alumni, um, the former coaches that have helped build a foundation. Um, that's very, very important. Um, 
Travis and I have spoken. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, it, it's a it's a unique situation, um, but you know, I think he's he's excited for the the opportunity that I have um, because he knows the journey that I've taken to get here, and um, uh, you know that that's appreciated for sure. Are you already looking forward to that first tag race? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, can't wait. Do you know the date? Um, no, I don't. Okay, all right. I'll get back to you on that though. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's a great question. Uh, uh, honestly, I haven't had time to think about it. <laughs> I think what I'm looking forward to the most right now is just um, clarity, you know, clarity of our roster, clarity of, um, you know, our staff. And, and you know, I'm, I'm in a one day at a time mode right now, but I think if you were able to project forward, um, what I'm looking forward to the most here uh, are, are seeing those Bobcat fans with a standing ovation, uh, winning a game at the buzzer, uh, seeing our players storm the floor, running into a locker room and, um, seeing, you know, guys jumping up and down and Gatorade baths. I mean, those are the, that's the music that gives this experience harmony. And um, I'm very excited to, to create those, those memories. Having played for your grandfather in high school, um, are there any principles of his that you feel like you also embody now? Yeah, uh, all of them. You know, um, The thing, that, the thing that stands out the most is the word attitude. Um, that's what we say when we huddle up. Um, that's what he always preached. Um, and, and that can carry you in good times and adversity. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's the thing that I try to emphasize the most to, to our guys, to our team, to my children, um, just the power that's in that. Um, because we get to control that. Um, it's not impacted by, um, you know, anything but ourselves. So. Um, that would be probably the biggest thing for sure. Do you have a, a specific type of offense you like to run and then defensively two zone man a, a mix? Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll play uh, both zone and man, um, but primarily man to man defense. Um, offensively, you know, we, you know, we adapt to our, our talent base and our, and our personnel. So there's some core philosophies that have been consistent from year one to year 12 um, that are going to be, you know, consistent spacing things and um, you know, concepts that have, have, have been successful uh, independent of what our personnel might be. Um, but until I really know, you know, where our, where our talent lies in terms of creating advantages, um, you know, once that happens, we'll sit down and, and, and create a system that matches that. Um, but ultimately, it's about putting the players in position to succeed. You know, giving our best shooters time and space, giving our post players uh, opportunities and angles, giving our point guards understanding of, of where the defense is coming from and how to make great reads, great passes. Um, so it's my job is to put them in position to succeed. And uh, that's looked different in year one as a head coach uh, than year 12 as a head coach and been very fluid in between. So um, ultimately, you know, I think there's some, some tenets though. Um, we, we very much value skill and shooting, um, but we also value toughness and basketball IQ. Um, and obviously you need size athleticism so it's a uh, you know, it's a big equation um, but you know if you look at the teams that I've coached over the years we have always been very very efficient offensively we've shot the basketball extremely well we've shared the basketball extremely well and we've been very smart and prepared defensively no matter how we adapted those systems I know there was a question earlier about the possibility of bringing transfers over from Point Loma but have you thought about bringing assistants over or is that kind of still a work in progress yeah, I'm, uh, you know, it's a work in progress in the sense that uh, the ink's not dry and I, I can't say anything at this time, but uh, certainly when you are leading a basketball family, you want to um, hire from within your basketball family. And so, um, you know, I trust those guys deeply and uh, I wouldn't be here without them. And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what the days, you know, uh, hold and, and uh, to come. I saw Trisha Benford in here earlier what your communication has been like with her in the past several days or what your kind of first impression is? Yeah, it was, it was great to sit down with her during the process and just um, get, get her sense for this community, um, for this university. She's got almost 20 years um, here. And so she's seen the way it's grown um, and, and what's happening here now, the explosion of success. Um, 
so she spoke to that a lot and uh, that's what that's what I had perceived from the outside looking in uh, but it was just great to hear kind of um, from the inside like what that looks like um, so that was that was very valuable but uh, you know I'm looking forward to sitting down and picking her brain a lot more than that it seems like there was a lot of activity over the weekend um, I'm curious if you saw any of the rodeo I, I was able to peek in during our tour Casey was kind enough to, uh, to, to take me around and uh, man it was it was packed it looked like an exciting event and uh, I've got a couple uh, women in my family that, that love horses and, and rodeo, so I'm sure I'm sure we'll be there in the future. How do you feel like uh, you, you've been coaching before the transfer portal and now obviously with the transfer portal? How have you adapted to it, and what just have been your thoughts on this kind of changing landscape with that and NIL and other things? Like that? Yeah, um, uh, as I said during the interview process, uh, before there was a transfer portal, um, you know we were portaling as coaches at Whitworth and, and Point Loma. Um, COVID has made it, uh, I think, exasperated with the additional year of eligibility and, and how many student athletes are, you know, in the market that have um, continued opportunities to play. Um, and then obviously, you know, NIL has changed the entire landscape of college athletics. And so um, it's just, it, it's new and it's different, um, but ultimately, you know, you, you adapt or you perish. And so uh, whether that's adapting from the division one level at Lehigh to the division three level at Whitworth, where now you're convincing families to invest thousands and thousands of dollars for their son's college basketball experience. That's a very different conversation than the ones I was having at, at Lehigh. So that was uh, one time I had to adapt. Um, going from Whitworth to Point Loma, um, obviously, again, a different level. Um, again, you have to adapt. And so I think that's, that's what everyone's doing right now across the board. Um, you know, my goal is to be a great mentor to our players and to be there for them. Um, and so I, I want to provide support to them, but also I want them to make decisions that are based um, in, in real things and things that are going to be um, truly life changing. And for some people, um, NIL can be that. Um, and, and that's a reality. But I think for many, many others, the experiences they have with their teammates, the opportunity to win championships in a community on a consistent basis, uh, to be a part of an alumni network, um, to, to, to be able to uh, achieve some uh, personal and individual goals with a group of people that you've gone to battle with over and over again. The depth of that uh, value to me um, is, is what has not changed. And uh, I, I don't think that will ever change um, just because that's the, the fabric of sport. Yeah. All right, anything else? Just one last one. Uh, I'm sure San Diego's not having a spring day like today. <laughs> uh, what gets you excited just about Bozeman, Montana, and the little time that you and your family have been here? Well, number one, the people. Um, I mean, the way we have been welcomed here uh, has been just incredible. Uh, we are looking forward to embedding ourselves into this community and, and being a part of that. Um, that's the first thing that stands out. Uh, it was what drew me to the job. Um, the, the community support, the excitement, the enthusiasm, um, and the expectations. Um, but in terms of the, the, the city itself, I mean, this is, this is God's country. I mean, it's gorgeous up here. Um, whether, you're, whether you're landing the plane in, in the winter with snow-capped mountains or in the summer uh, looking at rivers and lakes, it's, uh, it's just a beautiful place to live and, and explore. And so we're excited to do that um, someday in the future. <laughs>